I don't know why Haaland's not marking Gabriel. I mean... It does seem odd. It, it does. Yeah, your two best headers just cancel each other out. What a game. Four goals, one red card. Managers kicking seats. It all went off in the early season. Premier League title showdown between Arsenal and Manchester City at the Etihad on Sunday. We're back in the Tactics Exposed studio and I'm joined as always by Sun Sports tactical guru Dean Scoggins. Dino, you're going to tell me five points about how Mikel Arteta outsmarted Pep Guardiola once again thanks to a genius in-game switch and a few other little tweaks that you notice watching the game. Yeah, and we're going to leave the refereeing alone, OK? We'll try and do that. <laughs> but it started in the second half with this in-game switch from Arteta, which they started with a 5-4 formation and then changed to a 6-3-0 formation. Um, but it was a game of trust and also a new position for Martinelli. So, uh, so we'll go through that. And also, did you spot the new coach? on the Arsenal sidelines. <laughs> OK, and then also the set-piece geniuses. We know about that from Arsenal. Why weren't City watching the Tottenham game? But also there was this new thing we saw, a little tweak from the tactical geniuses on set-pieces. Um, and also, why was Haaland not marking Gabriel? Bernardo Silva, the genius off the ball, is the next thing we're going to talk about. And the Savinho and Doku on the touchline. And a hat tip to Tactics Exposed, where we, uh, we called it would happen, and it happened in there eight minutes in the game. Um, and there was a little new position for Guardiola as well, which we'll touch on. And uh, Savinho's mistake for Arsenal's goal. Everyone's talking about Carl Walker, but actually, Savinho was the mistake. Um, we'll go into that as well. And the last point, the housery. <laughs> which, uh, yeah, we said we wouldn't talk about refereeing, but realistically, the housery from Arsenal, you all know what I mean, is a tactic that they're using so well. There we go, tactics exposed. Right, as you said already, we're not going to do refereeing. This is a tactic show. If you want to get the down low on all the big decisions of the game, go to Sunsports YouTube, watch the latest episode of The Whistleblower with former Premier League referee and Sunsport columnist Mark Halsey. Right, Dino, 5-4 formation to 6-3. It's impossible to avoid the fact that when Trossard gets sent off, any tactical plans go out the window and it's park the bus. But it was actually park the bus in quite a specific way. Yeah, it really was. And as you say, it, they would have planned for a, a scenario where they were ahead in the game, Arsenal. So the fact that they got 2-1 up was great. And they will drill this on the training ground. Drill, drill, drill this on the training ground. So it started with a 5-4-0 formation, OK? So five defenders, four midfielders in front, no striker. They basically said, OK, you can have the ball. I mean, <laughs> I, I can't... It Was, was it 88% possession, something like that? So you can have the ball, but you ain't going to score. You are not going to find any space. But five or ten minutes into that second half, they made an in-game switch, which was very, very clever. Because basically what was happening was Bernardo Silva, and we'll come back to him again in a minute, but Bernardo Silva was finding this pocket of space in between Haaland, who was occupying the two centre-backs, and the left-back. And straight away, Arteta went... This is trouble. Yeah. This is big trouble. So he's then already got Ben White on for Saka at half-time to go five at the back. <laughs> he then basically says to Martinelli, who has been outstanding defensively over the last couple of weeks, you're going to play left-back. <laughs> so Art Martinelli, new position, left-back. But that is because they identified this space that they were getting. And the wingers on the, on the touchlines, again, we'll come back to that in a minute, but the wingers on the touchlines for City were creating these pockets of space Arsenal stopped it, Arteta reacted straight away, and then you end up with these Man City players, mainly the centre-backs, getting all the ball. Mm. And that's what they wanted. Arsenal but, wanted it. And just, just quickly before we move on to point two, that requires a significant level of trust from Arteta. In that, and that is really the point, the trust. And so they will drill this on the training ground, and this might sound strange, but what they're drilling is don't chase the ball. Don't chase the ball. And that sounds weird, right? But Declan Rice, Havertz and Party in front... I mean, the, the masseuse will have, would have had quite a job with the three of them afterwards, <laughs> I think, because they covered some grass. But what they're doing is they're jockeying out to where the ball might go, and then they come back into their position again. Move across and come back into position. Don't chase the ball, just move across. And we call it four-yard defending, OK? You go four yards, 
And if you go beyond four yards, it's somebody else's job. Right. So don't go more than four yards, because if you go more than four yards, what's going to happen is someone's going to play it in the gap you've left. Yeah, yeah. Because they're that good a team, City. So you're playing six at the back and three in front. You're, you've got a zone, a four-yard zone. It's effectively zonal marking yeah, in, in open play. Exactly that, exactly that. And what it means is, again, as you say, trust. If someone doesn't do their job right, that's their fault. Do your job to defend your four-yard zone. And what it ended up happening was this sort of attack v defence drill yeah. from a training ground. Exactly. You know, we, we drill this yeah. on the training ground, we'll do it every game, and you can imagine the Arsenal training ground when they're doing attack v defence with Arteta in the middle of the field rather than on the side. Here, 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 stay there, stay there, stay there. And Declan Rice, although he barely touched the ball, Havertz, party, and the two fullbacks. I mean, Timber's defending was just brilliant. Um, and they just all did their jobs perfectly. And let's be honest, got a little bit unlucky at the end. Uh, they did get a little bit unlucky. Um, a new coach, though, was spotted. Mikel Arteta gets a lot of grief for always being miles out of his technical area, normally berating referees for missing a rule break against his team, oblivious to the fact that he's currently breaking the rules by doing it. But he's found a way around that. He has. And last week in the North London derby, Jorginho had a fantastic game um, in a defensive position. But a lot of Arsenal fans are getting on his back for his in-game play. But one of the things he's always great at is carrying out the manager's duties on the field. So he's organising people. He make, He's very, you know, brilliantly tactically aware, quite frankly. So now, fourth officials are getting on Arteta's case about his technical area. Get back in there, Mikel. Get back in there, Mikel. They did it in the North London derby and he was having a row with the fourth official. So what does, what does Arteta do this week? Get Jorginho off the bench. He's a sub. Go down the touchline, mate, <laughs> and you tell them how to do it. And I don't need to leave my technical area. And there are three or four occasions, I think we can find a grab of a couple, where Jorginho was jumping up and down on the touchline, trying to get Arsenal into a position that Arteta wanted them to be. And it's just basically translating the manager to the players. Yeah. It's, it's just a little thing, but it, it's brilliant. So I would imagine that Jorginho, um, if he's not already, will be doing his badges at Arsenal very soon. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, very much Cristiano Ronaldo for Portugal yeah, in the yeah. final, wasn't it? Right, set-piece geniuses, you've put that did City not watch Spurs last weekend? Or, more to the point, did they not watch Tactics Exposed preview show for the Man City Arsenal game? and talk about it? Yeah, and set-piece kings and uh, Hover, I think it's pronounced, the coach um, is getting all the plaudits and, and look, rightly so, but Man City got it all wrong. I mean, there was three things that we can talk about on this. First of all, Haaland's at the front post. This is for Gabriel's goal. This is for Gabriel's yeah. goal and the chance he missed just before that. Yeah, okay, Because yeah, yeah. there was one just Powering before. Yeah, just a huge header. And, and both, of the, both of them were the same thing. Exactly yeah. the same thing. So if you needed a warning, lads, which they shouldn't have done, <laughs> but if you needed a warning, you had it. So first of all, we talked last week about Saka's delivery normally being front post zone or middle zone, OK? On, and then they attack that position. So what do Arsenal know when they're going to play Man City? Haaland. Mm. Haaland's going to mark the front post. Ha if Haaland's on the front post, we're not going to take front post corners anymore. <laughs> we'll go over his head. So, the first, so straight away, City are lined up with this diamond of four players at the front post to basically try and block that Arsenal front post cross. So Gabriel, or whoever it is, has gone to Saka. No joy there, mate. Let's go over their heads. Yeah. And, then, and then, so that's mistake one. Secondly, I don't know why Haaland's not marking Gabriel. I mean... It does seem odd. It does. It? Yeah, yeah, your two best headers just cancel each other out. And when it's at the other end, if, if City have got a corner, Gabriel's marking Haaland. Yes. So why not do it the other way Instead around? Of that, you've got Carl Walker doing the tickling uh, technique. Again, let's... I mean, what is he doing? I mean, <laughs> if, if... I mean, I, I, you know, again, at a much lower level than these guys, but if I'm defending at a weekend or when I used to defend at a weekend, or I'm attacking, if this bloke's going like this to me, I'm just laughing at him. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what are you doing, Carl Walker? But Carl Walker also does exactly what Romero did the week before yeah. and turns his back on Gabriel. But the genius tactic. We know about the collision course. We well, told gonna, you, yeah, we told you about that episode. last week. We know that's what they create. They create a collision so the goalkeeper can't come. Edison had the same problems that Vicario had the week before. They don't let the goalie get out of there. And look, you can have a go at the goalie all you like and say he's got to be better, but it's so difficult to do. But what they did, because it was the back post, OK, is that 
they use Calafiori as a piggyback man. Yeah. Right. And so Calafiori is one of the one of the defenders who comes in at the back post. So not only have you got the giant Gabriel jumping for the ball, they put Calafiori in front of him so Gabriel can put his hands <laughs> on his shoulders and come up even higher and score the goal. They did it for the chance before and they did it just after. Now that's not just because Calafiori's in the way of Gabriel. He's no. in the way on purpose. Yeah. That is a tactic that they've absolutely nailed. If we're doing front post, we know what we're doing with the blockers and Gabriel just attacks the ball. We didn't have any joy at the front post. We'll go to the back post. But again, City were naive for me. Yeah, yeah. But but we did see that. You know, I'm, I'm sort of getting used to watching football the way you watch football, you know. And one thing I did notice is that collision course thing you said about VAR obviously checked for a potential foul by Martinelli on the goalkeeper. Nothing given, it wasn't a foul. No. And correct decision makes it impossible for him to get the ball. Gabriel Absolutely, scored. yeah. And Martinelli does what we call giving the goalkeeper a back. <laughs> you know, he just goes yeah. like that. And, and you know, and it, and he's allowed to stand there. Yeah, he's course. allowed to be where he likes. The goalkeeper doesn't have to run into him, no. but as it turns out, normally Arsenal, Arsenal do that. But it's not a foul. Again, they cause chaos. There were probably... 16 players in the six yard box, yeah. which is just remarkable. Yeah. You know, you see it on the TV, you'll see it from above, and it doesn't look that congested. But believe you me, if you're in a six yard box like that, you, it's chaos. Yeah, yeah. Chaos. It, was, it was pretty much yeah. 16 men in the six yard box in open play. For most <laughs> yes, of the second it was. Half yeah. as well. But right, number three, Bernardo Silva, yeah, and his absolute genius off of the ball. Now, you got called out on Tactics Exposed in the comments on the YouTube comments last week. Make sure you're subscribing to Sun Sport on YouTube to make sure you can get involved. You got a bit of grief, didn't you? First of all, what, what was the comment? What did it say? Well, the comment basically called me out for saying there's no chance that Man if Man City play the wingers on the wings that Arsenal are going to allow them spaces down the channels. I'm yeah. paraphrasing. I.e. the space Bernardo Silva was. Exactly. Yep. I, I said about playing three at the back and playing wingers, right? Yep. The, the chalk on your boots wingers. And, um, and that's exactly what they did. They didn't use Rico Lewis, which was my sort of... I was suspicious they might use Rico Lewis. The they inverted. picked the inverted fullback. Yeah. What they did instead was Carl Walker played at right back, but Gvardiol was the one who played inverted. Yeah. But he played almost like a number 10, and it was almost like Ange Postacoglu's fullback position yeah, yeah. rather than anything else. So that was interesting in itself, but it effectively creates the same thing where you've got three or two at the back, two in midfield, and then a line of four yeah. behind Haaland. So you have Doku and Savinho on the wings. So when I saw the team sheet and I saw Savinho and Doku on the wings, yes. I think we've got a clip from last week's show just to show that Dino does actually know what he's talking about. So if they get Doku right on one wing, and Savinho or Silva right on the other wing, it stretches the game out sideways, which inevitably creates spaces in between those lines. There we have it, Dino. Proof is in the pudding. You were right. Your man in the comments is wrong, but just t tell us a little bit more. Yeah, Arsenal got done by the Arteta, Arteta tactic. We talked about the Saka hijacker in yeah, two shows could. ago. Yeah, yeah. OK, where what Arteta wants, very quickly what Arteta wants, is the ball played up the line to the, to the winger, and the winger doesn't receive it with his back to goal. He receives it running in field. And so you'd think the Arsenal defenders would know what was coming. But Savinho has done Calafuri. Mm. He's done him with that because the ball comes up the line from Walker and Savinho takes it on the run inside Calafuri. So he's toast straight away, Calafuri. But the genius comes in Bernardo Silva. What incident are we talking about here? This is the goal, the Haaland goal. Okay. Oh, sorry, yeah, the Haaland goal. So Savinho takes it on that right wing, chalk on his boots, comes inside. But the genius comes from Bernardo Silva where he moves into that channel where Savinho is coming out of. And we'll show a grab of this, I'm sure. He takes party on a little mystery tour out of midfield. <laughs> and Bernardo Silva goes into that right-hand position as Savinho comes out of it. This has been told, this is a tactic from the training ground. Bernardo, you go here. Savinho, you go here. And then a lot of people were talking about Saliba being distracted by, by um, Gundogan in midfield. But realistically, this is just get Savinho inside, get Bernardo out there to create that channel of space for Haaland to play. It's a run through and the ball to be played through. And then Haaland's one on one. The rest is history. It is. Just quickly on that, right? What I was noticing as Haaland's running through, is it just me? Or was Saliba's positioning really off and there was far too much space between him and Haaland? He should have shifted over a little bit earlier, not just because, and that's easy to say, but it, it felt like, like you were talking about your four-yard zone. If he shifts over another two or three yards, trusts the man behind him is going to come with him, 
And then he got he, he seemed to leave Haaland a big old corridor of space. That was at centre back rather than the midfield. Yeah, it was. And and it basically is because City have got them on the run. You know, when we talked before about that when that when a team does that defending hijacker, sacker hijacker against him. It's that they need to stop it before the pass has been played. But what Silva has done is drag party out of the way. But the two centre-backs then are in a very difficult position. Gabriel probably is two yards too close to his left back yeah. because Silva's gone that way. Yeah. And then Saliba is thinking about Gundogan over his shoulder and he's probably two yards too far that way. Yeah, so yeah. you've given Haaland that four-yard run. And then he goes I, through. I think if it's me and I'm William Saliba, I'm making sure that I sort of keep an eye on Erling Haaland rather than uh, Ilkay Gundogan. Right, Savinho mistake for Arsenal's goal, Dino. Arsenal, the cutback kings, as we've covered on previous episodes of Tactics. Tell us more. Yeah, so, look, we're, again, we're not going to go into refereeing, so they shouldn't have allowed, you know, a quick free kick. They Whistleblower, did. Whistleblower, episode five, Sunsport, Mark Kelsey, YouTube. They did allow, they did allow the, the quick free kick. Um, Walk was quick enough to get back. He did get back, OK? So he's in that position. He's squared up with Martinelli. Um, but what Arsenal do, and we talked about this previously, is they drive a team back into their own area. And if we see what happens when when Martinelli gets the ball on that left-hand side and, and Walker's got him one-on-one, -on -one, behind him, all the Man City players are running back towards their own goal because they work hard, OK? So they work hard, they're running back to their own goal. So Arteta manipulates this. When a team goes back to their own goal, the the, what he's telling the wingers is you are not running at it because all you're going to get is you, even if you beat your man is you're going to see a wall of blue shirts at the front post where they're going to block your cross, OK? And so what they do is they come back inside and the cutback comes to this zone on the edge of the area. And we talked about it pre-North London derby. That was a real thing for Tottenham to watch out for and City fell into that trap. But it was basically because Savinio runs beyond the ball. Yeah. He's thinking, I'll go and help out. It's noble but I'll go and help out Carl Walker. Carl Walker doesn't need help. You know, he's well, one of the he best one-on-one -on -one fullbacks in the... He did in that occasion. Yeah, but, what, but he went back. He, he was all right. Walker was in an all right position. And, Mart and Martinelli is coming back on his right foot. And then he's looked. Savinio's there. Oh, look, Calafiori's there for a shot. And if you look at two frames before the goal, Calafiori's not even in the shot. No. He's not there. So, again, he's allowing Savinio to run away and leave him the space in front to run onto. And I actually just want to look at the referee's position here because, actually, the ref nearly runs beyond the play because that's what Arsenal do. They run, 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 run. And as a referee, you should be stopping before you get to the penalty area. Michael Oliver nearly goes in the box as well. <laughs> you know, because, yeah, because striker. that's what Arsenal yeah, yeah. do to you. They push you that way. But then Oliver had to get out of the way quick, and he did, to be fair, um, for Calafiori to whip it in the far top corner. And what a finish, by the way. Yeah, that's quite... You're obviously implementing your tactics properly when even the referee's being duped by the things that you're doing. Right, Dino, tactics exposed so far has been quite technical. We look at boxes, we look at diamonds, we look at different shapes, corridors of space. You've got all the terminology. But I think we're going into a bit more of my ballpark <laughs> with point number five. We're talking about the housery, which is just as much of a tactic, is it not, as underlapping, overlapping, inverted fullbacks? Yeah, it is. I mean... Housery, you're right, OK. That's going to become the new, new phrase of the season when we're watching Arsenal. Um, they're incredibly clever at it most of the time. But there's this line. And obviously, they've been found out a couple of times. Again, I don't want to go into refereeing too much, but Declan Rice gets sent off against Brighton, whatever you think about it. Trossard gets sent off in this game, whatever you think about that, and whatever you think about the Doku incident before it. But that is because they're trying to slow Man City down. Yep. You know, and they did it in the North London derby against Tottenham as well. They're, you know, it's, it's a tactic to slow the other team down because they know full well when they're in position, they're so difficult to break down. So what they don't want is a quick free kick being taken or you know, a throw-in being taken quickly. The, actually, the equalising goal came because Man City and Jack Grealish is quick thinking mm. in taking a quick corner. Yeah. And and what actually should have happened is an Arsenal player, look, I know by this stage they're so tired, legs but actually the legs there, would have been they? gone. But actually what should have happened is the right back has come over and probably been closer than the 10-yard space you're allowed, to which point the ref blows his whistle, says, step away, step away, and he stops the short corner. But Jack Grealish sees there's no defending there, quick thinking. But the housery... Housery, bro, you know, backfired on them yeah. because there was meant to be seven minutes of added time 
and there ended up being nine. Yeah. And the reason that there was nine is because they kept going down in those seven minutes. For the first two minutes. I exactly, think, yeah. Down. And, yeah. you know, whether it was timber with cramp, it was Gabriel. Gabriel was holding his teeth at one point. <laughs> I mean, a tooth injury we had in, in that half. You know, and look, Trossard makes a big error. He makes yeah. a big error. Well, that's the thing. Ultimately, it backfires there, doesn't yeah. it? With, yeah. That's the ultimate attempt. Yeah, but I, I would also it. say that, it, you know, it allowed Arsenal to actually play the second half this is weird, it, but it allowed them to play the second half with nine men, ten men, including the yeah. keeper, behind the ball. Yeah. And I actually think City would probably have rather played against 11 in the second half yeah. because it would have been more space and actually Arsenal might at some stage have attacked. But what ended up happening was, that, you know, this is important to note as well, there was actually ball in play time was more in that second half than any other game this season. Yeah, so right. although, you know, it kept coming back at them, but they did slow the game down and it, and it is a tactic. They will be saying it to each other. You know, there was a moment where Raya caught the ball and within about 35 seconds, yep. Ben White's jumped on his back, <laughs> Saliba's patting him on the head, yeah, yeah. then Gabriel goes down again somewhere else, then Timber's got cramp and then, oh, look, David Raya gets up just about to restart the game, and oh, my leg's hurting again. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, look, it, it, it's not very pretty to watch, but it's a tactic. Teams have got to stop it. Referees have, have got very little joy against it. What do you do? You yeah. know, you can't tell someone they're faking an injury. Oh, so, other teams have just got to get more cute, and they've got to get as cute as Arsenal. Cool. Yeah, John Stones, it was accusing Arsenal of being masters of the dark arts after the game. I'm not sure if Erling Haaland launching a ball at Gabriel's head would count as a tactic as well, but that's it. 